Good morning. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again on this Tuesday morning and giving me the opportunity to be part of your day. I greatly appreciate the wonderful opportunity to teach God's Word, and I'm glad you're with us. Whether you're watching this in video format or listening to it in the audio podcast, uh, we're just glad to be part of your day. Uh, we've been going through 2 Corinthians, and we're coming to the end of the book. Uh, we're in the last couple episodes. We're going to finish up chapter 11. So we're in chapter 11. We're going to be in verse 16 here. And we see a very unique thing coming from the Apostle Paul in this passage. Because really what we see is Paul here is about to take some time to brag on himself. And he does this. Uh, for all of his good attributes, and then some, you know, tomorrow we'll look at some of the negative things he went through to be true. And again, in context, what we see here is that Paul is in battle to an extent trying to teach this church that these other apostles, epistles, self-proclaimed preachers um, that, you know, just were causing grief. They were going against Paul, trying to say that Paul was wrong, many of them bringing in false teaching um, to the church. They were, they were bringing lies. Their teaching about Jesus was different. Uh, most of it self-serving. So they bragged on themselves. And so one of the things that these false teachers had done to validate themselves, if I can use that, was simply the idea of how talented they were, how smart they were, how good they were, and they built him up while criticizing Paul. Unfortunately, Paul found himself, as we'll see here in a little bit, found himself in a scenario where this church began to believe, if we can use the pedigree of these other people. It wasn't a valid pedigree, it was a self-proclaimed pedigree. We mentioned yesterday, be very careful if you get around some preacher, some spiritual leader, who spends, some, uh, spends a large portion of their time talking about themselves. Uh, one of the things we're taught, one of the things we know is a fact, that a, a godly man that wants to lead people in the spiritual leadership, their job is not to get them to follow us. Their job, our job, is to get you to follow Jesus. So we should be pointing up Jesus, lifting up Jesus. And, and in doing that, we're not, we're not necessarily going to always be ripping ourselves down, but the premise is not really to be that noticed, is to make sure that what we do helps people to see Jesus. So anytime you get around a teacher who's constantly talking about themselves, it is something to be a, a little leery about. It's a great principle to look at when wondering, is what they're saying valid? But Paul tells something. He says, since I find myself in a scenario where this church is believing this, this self-centered, narcissistic comments of these other epistles, I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to use and speak from the mindset of these other preachers. And he does that starting in verse 16. He says, I say again, let no one think me a fool. If otherwise, at least receive me as a fool, that I, may, that I also may boast a little. He goes, so people think I'm a fool because I haven't bragged on myself. These other men talked about their abilities and their pedigree and they ripped Paul. He goes, don't think me a fool. Don't think that because I don't talk about myself, I don't have anything to offer. So he goes, let me boast. Let me tell you a little bit about me. Verse 17, he goes, what I speak, I speak not according to the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. He said, what I'm about to tell you, it's not generally how we speak in the Lord. When we speak in the Lord, we point people to Jesus. He increases, we de decrease, and we point to that. He said, so I'm not going that direction. I'm not using the direction the Lord says. I'm following these other men. And he'll explain a little bit why he does that. Verse um, 18, you're seeing that many boast according to the flesh. I also will boast. He goes, because so many people point out their own greatness. Verse 19, for you put up with fools gladly since you yourselves are wise. So here's what he's saying. I can brag on myself, and he'll do that in the next section of Scripture. Starting verse 22, we'll talk about tomorrow. He brags in his pedigree. He brags on his persecution. And he uses that as a validating source to tell people why he is God's man and how he can prove it through that level of pedigree. But he gives a, a level of a criticism to this church. He says that um, you put up with fools gladly. You were happy to embrace Fools, here's what he says, since you yourselves are wise. He goes, here's what he's saying, and this happens a lot today. You think you figured it all out. You think you know, and so you are basing who you're going to follow on other people, on, on your opinion of other people. This is what we're looking for. We think we're smarter than everyone else, and so this is what we're looking for. We're looking for talent or, or whatever it would be. We're not seeking Jesus. And he goes, so, so you have chosen because you think you're wise. You think you know better than everyone else. What you don't realize is you're following these foolish men. You're following people who you should not be following, and your reason is it's because you have boasting and you think you've got it all figured out. So here's what he says in verse 20. For you put up 
with it, if one brings you into bondage, if one devours you, if one takes from you, if one exalts himself, if one strikes you on the face. Let's walk through and see what he's mentioning about these four things he's happened. You put up with bondage if one if you put up with it if one brings you into bondage. And so a lot of times was happening then, it's still true today, um, you're in bondage. You are a follower of this other person. And in that, you have to do what they say. These men, these false teachers, rarely teach the freedom and liberty found in Jesus. They almost always teach, do what I want, do what I want, follow me. You've got to do all the things that I think you need to do. And you become, the term followers has lost a little bit of its potency today because we see that on Instagram, we see that on in social media, that you're a follower of somebody. But not just following their life. These people had to, they had to live the lifestyle that was set aside. Religion does this. Religion's big on this today. Do all these things and hopefully God will love you enough. You become followers of a religion and the religion places these overbearing rules and regulations on you and hopefully you've done enough to be accepted by Jesus. It's bondage. It's what religion is. It's pure bondage. And that's what he's saying. He goes, you, instead of seeking the truth, the simplicity, he said recently, that is in Jesus, you're following the bondage of these false teachers. In our day and age, the bondage of false religion. He says, if one devours you, I mean, they, they overwhelm you. They, they take advantage of you. And that especially in a culture sense, give me money. He says, if one takes from you, give me money. And here's what happens is a lot of people will give money to these teachers who are living in immense wealth. And I'm not going to get into the conversation about whether a preacher should be wealthy or not. The Bible says we're not to be greedy or filthy of lucre. Uh, we're, our desire is not to go in this for money. So if our motive is to go in for money, our motive is wrong. That doesn't mean, I've heard some people say that means all preachers should be poor. <laughs> That's not what it means. The Bible says an elder of worthy of double honor. You can be very careful in making that comparison that he should be poor. Um, hopefully he's paid enough to be able to do what he's doing and take care of his family. But if he's going in and he's, if he's compromised, see, if our desire is to make money and to become wealthy, you can do that in that day and you will compromise the teaching and you lose certain things and you will abuse your followers to get money. And that's what they do. They take from them. He says, if one exalts himself, see how great he is. If one strikes you on the face, okay, they're attacked. If you don't do what you want, you're criticized, uh, you're brought down. Basically, you're only good if you're doing what that guy says. To our shame, I say that we were too weak for that. But in whatever, but whatever, anyone is bold. I speak foolishly. I am bold also. He says, here's the problem. You have been following these false teachers. And because you think yourself to be wise, you think you've got it figured out. You establish, I want this and I want this and I want that. That's what you're looking for in the teacher. And frankly, you're looking more for uh, style than you really are looking for content. And that's what he's saying is missing in this scenario. And that's what he's challenging us against. So not be overly consumed with the style, but look into the truth of what is being said. And let that be the thing that we follow. Tomorrow we're going to pick up in verse 22. And we're going to talk. He's going to go into a pedigree about his background, about the persecution he went through, and giving a little of, of why he can be seen as a valid apostle. Thanks for joining us today as we come to the end of chapter 11. Appreciate the chance be part of your day. Hope it's an encouragement. Hope you continue to, continue to join us, and we hope you'll uh, see you again tomorrow. God bless.